Hello from our Digital Broadcast Center. My name is uh, Ambassador Professor David K. Ewan from the United States, and I welcome you to this program. This global television program was first introduced in Russia and Europe, and then later on uh, to Asia and the Middle East, and more recently, um, Latin America, and our newest viewing audience, is the United States. So we welcome the United States as part of our audience and thank you for joining us. Again, my name is Ambassador Professor David K. Ewan and what we do in our ambassadorship is we focus on the civilian business consulting, providing educational resources and technology support. But what we've been doing in our second season is we have been putting more focus on faith. And the reason why is a lot of people around the world during this time of turmoil, as I may call it, uh, where we're dealing with coronavirus or COVID-19, as other people call it, um, there is a concern of what is happening in the world. Um, and a lot of people have approached me in the area of Christianity, including Muslim people of the Muslim faith have asked, what is happening in the world of Christianity? Well, um, as we're doing this broadcast, we're about a week away from the Easter holiday in the year 2020. So this is a good opportunity to spend a moment and explain what the Easter holiday is all about. So let us begin. Christians know that Easter is central to the faith of Christianity. In fact, one of the earliest followers of Jesus declared that without Easter, there is no Christianity. So that really is the definition that we're going to be talking about today. So what exactly does Easter celebrate that's so important? And that's what my discussion with you today is. So simply put, Easter is the day when Christians commemorate Jesus's resurrection. Resurrection, as you may know, is the name given to the process by which one who is dead comes back to life. Well, on Easter, Christians remember that Jesus, who they believe died some 2,000 years ago, rose from the grave and lived again. So that is why we call it Resurrection Sunday. So Easter is also called Resurrection Sunday. So you might hear we in the Christian faith say, that Easter is on the day of Resurrection Sunday. So the Bible suggests that Jesus was one with God. And though he was God, he was more human in flesh and experienced what we experience as people. But there was one major exception. Jesus lived a completely holy, I should say, and sinless life. Therefore, when Jesus died, he satisfied God's requirement of perfection. That's what makes Jesus different from the rest of man. By living a holy life and dying on our behalf so that our sins could be forgiven, Jesus reversed the consequences of death. Think about that. By living a holy life and dying on our behalf, Jesus reversed the consequences of death. That means we have salvation and an everlasting life. That was the promise that Jesus gave. He was preparing a place for us, a place of heaven. So we're going to talk more about this. So through this act, Jesus gave humanity a supreme gift sent by God, his father. He lived the perfect life that we humans could not live. Then he died on our behalf that's the crucifixion. In doing so, he gave his perfect life to us so that he could be reconciled to God and experience life as it was meant to be. So God, through the person of Christ, loved us enough to enable humanity to experience a restored relationship with its creator now and forever. So today's topics, I'm going to talk about three things. Here are the three things that I'll talk about. Number one, it's the logical explanation of Easter. It's the logical explanation of Easter. So I'm going to give you an understanding in a logical sort of way. Okay. Then 
for number two, I'm going to talk about the Easter Bible story. Very simple. I'm going to tell you a very simple version of the Easter Bible story so that you understand what's in the Bible. And the third thing that I'll talk about is I'll tell you about the Easter story as told in scriptures. Okay, so first I'll talk about the Easter Bible story that's very simplified. And then I'll tell you the story of Easter in scriptures. So here's an abbreviated logical explanation of what we learned through the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. These are the things that we learn. Number one, God is holy. Humanity is not. We learn the separation. That's number one. Number two, holiness and unholiness cannot coexist. Number three, the opposition causes infinite brokenness in humanity's relationship with God. I'll read number three again. This opposition causes infinite brokenness in humanity's relationship with God. Number four, because we're incapable, people like you and me, because we're incapable of holy living as a result of sin, because sin is in our lives, God must satisfy that requirement on our behalf. That's what they mean when they say Jesus is our advocate. So number five, Jesus, who is one with God, lived a holy and sinless life. Number six, Jesus died on our behalf and by satisfying the requirement of holiness, he reversed the effect of our broken relationship with God, making reconciliation and connection with him possible forever. I'm going to read number six again. Jesus died on our behalf and by satisfying the requirement of holiness, he reversed the effects of our broken relationship with God, making reconciliation and connection with him possible forever. Okay, so that's the abbreviated logical explanation. And that's what we learned through the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, that's number one. Now, number two, I'm going to tell you the Easter Bible story. The Easter Bible story. And that's in four parts. Number one, the Last Supper. Number two, Judas betrays Jesus. We're going to talk about that. And number three, the crucifixion of Jesus. And number four, most importantly, the resurrection of Jesus. So these are the four things I'm going to talk about. Number one, the Last Supper. Number two, Judas betrays Jesus. Number three, the crucifixion of Jesus. And number four, the resurrection of Jesus. So let me tell you about the Last Supper. I'll tell you some scriptures where you can read this. So if you have a pencil and paper, write this down and then I'll give a quick summary. So for number one, the Last Supper that I'm going to talk about, there's Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 through 30. Okay, again, Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 through 30. That's one part. Another part is Mark chapter 14, verse 12 through 25. That's Mark chapter 14, verse 12 through 25. And then Luke chapter 22, verse 7 through 23. Luke chapter 22, verse 7 through 23. So here's how it goes, the Last Supper. As the disciples relaxed and ate dinner with Jesus, he explained to them that one of the 12 of them would soon betray him. He knew that. One by one, the disciples denied that it would be them, including Judas, who would be the betrayer. Jesus responded that the person who betrays him will have a terrible fate and that indeed it was Judas. So Jesus prayed and thanked God for the meal. He then broke the bread and shared the wine with the disciples and explained to them how the bread was a symbol 
of his body broken for them and the wine was a symbol of his blood which would be poured out for their sins to be forgiven this is where the church's tradition of communion comes from so that's number one now number two i'm going to tell you about judas now so this is where judas betrays jesus and here are the scriptures where you can read it so if you still got that pencil and paper write this down the first scripture is john chapter 18 verse 1 through 13 okay john chapter 18 verse 1 through 13 the next one is luke chapter 22 verse 1 through 6 so that's luke chapter 22 verse 1 through 6 then there's also luke chapter 22 verse 47 through 54 and then there's uh matthew chapter 26 verse 47 through 56 matthew chapter 26 verse 47 through 56 and finally mark mark chapter 14 verse 43 through 50 so mark chapter 14 verse 43 through 50. so let me give you a summary of what all of those scriptures are is all about so during the meal of the last supper jesus predicts that one of you will betray me we talked about this and that was referring to judas so judas leaves the supper and goes to the roman authorities who are looking to arrest jesus he accepts a bribe of 30 silver and agrees to take them to jesus Judas knew that Jesus and the disciples would go to the garden near Jerusalem and led the soldiers there stating, whoever it is I kiss, he is the one. Take him into custody and lead him away under guard. Okay. So leading the group into the garden, Judas sees Jesus with his disciples and approaches him. Greetings, Rabbi, Judas says, and he kisses Jesus very lightly fellow for what purpose are you present jesus responds and you see that in matthew chapter 26 49 and 50. answering his own question jesus says judas are you betraying the son of man with a kiss as the soldiers move toward jesus the apostles recognize what was happening lord we should I should say, Lord, should we strike with the sword? They ask. And that's in Luke 22, verse 49. Before Jesus can respond, Peter uses one of the two swords that the apostles have and attacks Malchus, a servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. Jesus caresses the ear of Malchus, healing the wound. He then teaches an important lesson telling Peter, return your sword to its place for all those who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Jesus was willing to be captured for he explains, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must take place this way? And that's in Matthew chapter 26, verse 52. This then leads to the trial and the crucifixion of Christ. See, Jesus knew this was prophecy. It needed to be done. So number three, this is now the part about the crucifixion of Jesus. So the scriptures, do you still have that pencil and paper? The scriptures are Matthew chapter 27, verse one through 54. Matthew chapter 27, verse one through 54. You can also read it in Mark chapter 15, verse 1 through 40. Mark chapter 15, verse 1 through 40. You can also read it in Luke chapter 23, verse 1 through 48. Luke chapter 23, verse 1 through 48. And finally, John chapter 19, verse 1 through 30. John chapter 19, verse 1 through 30. Now, let me explain the summary of all of those scriptures. So Jesus had prophesied of his death in Matthew from 
that time on Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and, and that he must be killed and on the third day, on the third day, be raised to life. Jesus understood that his life would be required as a sacrifice for the sins of man. So Jesus had a crown of thorns thrust on his head and made to carry his cross along the pathway to the hill where he would be crucified. The location of Jesus's crucifixion is known as Calvary. So you see, the crucifixion of Jesus was part of God's plan from the very beginning of the birth of Jesus. The sin of mankind would require a sacrifice. The sinless life of Jesus was lived and given so that man could receive salvation and eternal life in heaven. So now I'm going to tell you about the fourth part, the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, so once again, if you've got that pencil and paper, you can write down these scriptures about this part number four, the resurrection of Jesus. So this is Matthew chapter 28. There's also Mark chapter 16. Luke chapter 24 and John 20. I'll say that again. Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, and John 20. So let me give you a summary of what all of that is about. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of Christian faith. Quite simply, that's what Easter is all about. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of Christian faith. Without the resurrection, the belief in God's saving grace through Jesus is destroyed. When Jesus rose from the dead, he confirmed his identity as the Son of God and his work of atonement, redemption, reconciliation, and salvation. The resurrection was a real, literal, physical raising of Jesus's body from the dead. Jesus was arrested and uh, tried and found guilty of claiming to be a king. His body was hung on a cross between two thieves. After his death, Jesus's body was wrapped in linen clothes and placed in a tomb with a large stone rolled across the opening. On the third day in uh, an early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and another Mary came to the tomb and found it empty. Sitting on the rolled away stone was an angel of the Lord who told them to not be afraid because Jesus had risen. As the woman left to tell the disciples, Jesus Christ met them and showed them his nail pierced hands. So that's the understanding of Easter. But now what I'm going to do, in a very simple way, I'm going to give you the Easter story as told in scriptures. Okay, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to give you the Easter story as told in scriptures. So for number one, this is number one, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. This is in Matthew chapter 21, verse 7 through 9. And I'll read the scripture. Matthew chapter 21, verse 7 through 9. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them on their cloaks and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting. And that's in Matthew chapter 21, verse 7 through 9. Now I'm going to do number two. Number two. Judas agrees to betray Jesus. And that's in Matthew chapter 26, verse 14 through 15. Matthew chapter 26, verse 14 through 15. And I'll read it. Then one of the 12 whose name was Judas went to the chief priests and said, what will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. 
and that's in Matthew chapter 26, verse 14 through 15. That's number two. So now let me do number three. Here's number three. That's the Last Supper. It's where communion is all about. We talked about that before. So this is in Matthew uh, chapter 26, verse 18. He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand and I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And again, that's in Matthew chapter 26, verse 18. Now we'll talk about number four, the Garden of Gethsemane. And that's in Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. And also in Matthew, also in chapter 26, verse 39. So it's Matthew chapter 26. I'll read verse 36 and verse 39. So I will read it. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And, is, and saith unto his disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And that's in Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. Now I'll read verse 39. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed saying, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Never, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Not as I will, but as you will. And that's in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Now, number five. Number five, Jesus delivered to Pilate. And that's in Matthew chapter seven, verse one through two. Matthew chapter 27, verse one through two. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. And that's in Matthew chapter 27, verse 1 through 2. And number six, number six, Jesus's final steps. So I'm going to read from John and Matthew. So first I'll read from John chapter 19, verse 6. Again, that's John chapter 19, verse 6. And also Matthew chapter 27, verse 30 through 31. Matthew chapter 27, verse 30 through 31. So here's, here's the first one, which is John chapter 9, verse 6. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Okay, and that's in John chapter 19, verse 6. Now the next one, which is Matthew chapter 27, verse 30 through 31. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. And that's in Matthew chapter 27, verse 30 through 31. Now, number seven, number seven. This is the death of Jesus. And I will read two passages. One is Mark chapter 15, verse 33, and Luke chapter 23, verse 46. So first I'll read Mark chapter 15, verse 33, and that says, and when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Now I'll read Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Then Jesus calling out with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And that's in Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Now I'm on number eight. This is when Jesus is buried. So the scriptures I will read is, uh, first it's Matthew chapter 27, verse 57 through 59. And then I will read John chapter 19, verse 40 through 41. So let me first tell you about Matthew chapter 27, verse 57 through 59. I'll do that first. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. 
And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud. Now that is Matthew chapter 27, verse 57 through 59. And now I will read John chapter 19, verse 40 through 41. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen clothes with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. And that's John chapter 19, verse 40 through 41. Now number nine, the resurrection. This is the resurrection. This is in Luke chapter 24, verse one through six. This is what Easter is all about right here. This is it, the resurrection. Luke chapter 24, verse one through six. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. And that is in Luke chapter 24, verse one through six. So let's talk about what I've done today for you. We gave an overview of what Easter is. As you noticed, we talked about a lot of scriptures because it's the Bible that explains what Easter is. Easter is the definition of Christianity and it relates to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Very often we say that Easter is on Resurrection Sunday. That's what it's all about. And the way it was presented to you, to you today is number one, we did three things. Number one, we did uh, provided a logical explanation of Easter to give an understanding, just a logical explanation of Easter, what it's all about. And then number two, we talked about the Easter Bible story in a very simplified way. Okay, a very simple Easter Bible story so that you understand what it was all about. So then with that understanding, we could go to number three, which was the Easter Bible story as told in scriptures. And we provided all of the scripture for that. So I hope this is helpful to you in understanding what the celebration of Easter is. Um, my name is Ambassador Professor David K. Ewan. I welcome you to the program. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to you seeing me and me seeing you in our next episode. Thank you for joining me. This is Inspire.